Mom, Mom, I, I wanna watch Coco. Can we watch Coco? No, honey, we have Coco at home. Folks, this is literally one of the laziest movies I've ever seen. On a technical level, on a story level, on a title level, look at it! It couldn't even finish the title in full Spanish. Dia of the Dead. Not Dia de los Muertos, just Dia of the Dead. De Spanish of the Dead. English. You know, that's enough. That's enough. We'll borrow from Coco. We'll reuse the same animation over and over. We'll borrow some models. We'll, we'll just make this movie about 15 minutes long, you know, of actual original content and then stretch it out to an hour and 20 minutes. I'm not even joking. That's what the movie does. Why aren't we hiring WoW now to, to help fight for climate change? These guys recycle more than anyone that I know. That's a cool concept. We're gonna borrow that. Cool title you got there. A nice iconic movie. We're gonna borrow that. We are the king of mockbusters. We'll steal ideas, we'll borrow assets, and we will reuse animation almost back to back. All right, for folks who don't know, Wow Now Entertainment is one of the most notorious mockbuster companies ever. Ever. There's some pretty bad ones out there, from Asylum, Video Brinquedo, or however you say their name, of course the legendary studio, uh, Dingo Pictures. But WoW now is somehow able to just field content constantly. It is terrifying how much they can make. Where it's like, quality? Non-existent. Uh, scummy uh, uh, tactics for trying to steal the success and popularity of other of other franchises and films that deserve it. You know, they do that all the time. They've made a business out of it. But like, they they make more sequels for Secret Life of Pets than Secret Life of Pets. Even multiple iterations of, of that movie. And unfortunately, I am no stranger to Wow Now Entertainment. Uh, I've done a review of Finding Jesus, which is a ripoff, a Christian terrible ripoff of Finding Nemo. They made Finding Jesus 2. They made Bible Town, which is just garbage through and through. It's not ripping anything off except Christianity, apparently. Uh, I, that's just, that's the company. And I was wondering, could Dia of the Dead actually be worse? Because I always ask myself that. When I watch a new Wow Now film, I ask myself, can it be worse than where the bar currently is set, which is at the core of the earth? Can it be worse than Bible Town? Can it be worse than Finding Jesus? And here's the thing, it's like they discover new ways of being awful. They're like, well, that film, we were horrible with our dialogue and our animation. It's always horrible across the board, but they're like, now we're gonna get worse with our story, okay? We'll actually move our characters around and have some different angles of our characters actually like walking around. We're gonna reuse the animation over and over and over, but they're moving around town. But the story, oh, let us let us show you how bad we can get with the story. Exposition, thy name is Wow Now. And let me tell you, the story for Dia of the Dead, despite trying to copy Coco, a story that's very good, they somehow nuke it back to the Stone Age. It doesn't make any sense. It's not coherent at all. From the characters, what they're about, why they even exist, why they are even, there's no agency. Why Why, why are they going to the land of the dead? Why? Uh, for a singing contest, okay? A sing oh my God, I don't even know how to fucking even get this started. I really don't. I don't know even how to explain the story. It's like, okay, they're ripping off Coco. So I guess it's something about a little kid going to the land of the dead to find his family, right? Well, yeah, okay, kind of. But what if it was a mom who ran away from her husband and her child for two years and she's the world's greatest luchador, but she doesn't do any wrestling in the film, but she wants to be in a singing contest that's apparently two years later and she just has a husband who's like, that's my wife, she's just a free spirit, I'm getting actively cucked. And then the kid's like, well, mom's pretty great, especially that one time she left me for one fourth of my life. And then they go to the land of the dead to go find the mom who's like, well, I don't even wanna really be in this I miss my family. Lady, that train left the station. You cannot backpedal now. Go and be in the singing contest. And the singing contest has like the, that one Spanish artist who is like a skeleton model who's like has little clothes pins that hold up her clothes. She's got a bat assistant with goggles. And then, then they have the actual song. And she's like, I'm the world's greatest singer. For 10,000 years, I've won this contest. Let me sing. 
I'm not joking. She has no lyrics. Ah! <laughs> this movie sucks. It doesn't make any sense. I feel so bad for these poor kids. Uh, time and time again, look at these poor kids who end up with Wow Now films to watch. Ooh, I feel so terrible for them. No one would actively say, I want to watch a Wow Now film. You get tricked into it. You get gaslit into it. Or you're a sad man-child reviewer who has to make a video about it so I can warm the masses. That's that's my life. That's my duty. I have to protect you all from, from the nightmares that uh, are under the surface uh, of Wow Now entertainment. Ah, yes, the mother with her Shrek ears. Oh, yes, reuse skeleton models over and over. And of course, the wonderful models that I think might be original for WoW now with the bloodshot eyes and these, these uncanny valley teeth. I hate it. Some of the ugliest models I've ever seen. Uh, there's just no respect for, for animation here whatsoever. It's just about cashing in. So uh, I'm going to do my part and I'm going to dive into the depths of this eternal hell. And I'm going to tell you all about Dia of the Dead, one of the worst ripoffs I've ever seen. God damn, <laughs> I wish I was dead. Oh no, they'll go to the land of the dead and they'd find me. This, this father with his with his son with a Smeagol mouth. He's got the teeth like Smeagol, look at him. And why are you in your underpants like Brian Cranston? You're not breaking bad. All right, so what are the origins behind this film? I'll make this fast because I want to just get this over with. Dia of the Dead was released in 2019, so two years after Coco was released. Coco, a Pixar film, widely successful. Great film. I love it. I think it's one of the best things that come from Pixar in 2010 during that decade. So, of course, Wow Now is like, hmm, what's that? Money. We want that. We'll copy that. But we'll do it two years later because this is a very big film of our own that we're making. It takes time. I'm sure it took 10 minutes for them to make it. Now, for those who don't know, Dia de los Muertos is a Mexican holiday. It's a day of celebrating their ancestors. I think it's November 1st of every year. And you, 2010s had like Book of Life which was about that holiday. And then, of course, Coco. Though, for Dia of the Dead, it steals more from Coco. They're like, no, we, we, we want to do the Pixar thing. We're, we want that money. Book of Life, consider yourself lucky. You dodged a bullet. Now, Dia of the Dead was directed by James Snyder and was written by BC14. Yes, that's the actual name. BC14. I'm pretty sure it's an AI program that is used for writing all of Wow Now Entertainment's movies. Uh, um, that's probably not even a joke. And boy, do I feel so bad for these voice actors. I've mentioned before my theory about Wow Now. We got like this one voice actor named KJ Schrock, who's in like every single Wow Now production, and I feel that he's like locked in a basement in Hawaii. And that's because that's where the location of the studio is, though. I have more information about that. I've made some new discoveries, but KJ Schrock, I thought, was locked in a basement in Hawaii being forced to record for the rest of his days for Wow Now films, uh, which is a fate worse than hell, uh, a fate worse than death, even. <laughs> On brand with Dia of the Dead, apparently. But I've discovered that Wow Now is not as transparent as, uh, as I uh, suspected. Oh, shocked face, right? Who would have thought? Uh, wow Now Entertainment, I have no clue where they are. I look high and low, and I'm going to make a full-on video next year dedicated to Wow Now. I want to find out where they're located exactly, who's in charge, and what's going on, because the information for Wow Now is so cryptic. There's not much on their website at all. I don't know where their office is located. Someone said it was Hawaii. I even said in one of my previous videos it was Hawaii. I tried to verify that actually while researching Dia of the Dead. I can't. I don't think it actually is. I think it's a fake address. Apparently they might be in Delaware, according to this website, that like is some company trust. Uh, apparently they might be in Ontario, uh, maybe even Virginia. I don't know. I, I, I don't know where they're located. It's a it's a mystery company. And you got these folks who are attached to it where I look their names up to see if they have any credits involved. And it's like you're either just a voice actor punching the clock or you're an AI program or you're this mysterious benefactor, a uh, financier for the company who's probably living on some yacht in the Mediterranean. I don't know. It's a mystery. I want to crack that case so badly. So there'll be a video about WoW now and the truth behind their operations next year. I'm accepting that challenge. Time to be a detective. I want to find out exactly where they're located and what's going on because they keep changing their names for the company. Recently changed themselves to Family Entertainment TV. Uh, they were bought by some media company that acquires, I guess, 
streaming services and movies. Uh, the, the channel itself that was on YouTube as Wow Now TV, that was Wow Now Entertainment, is now like free movies and TV to watch, but it has the Wow Now like intro logo. I don't know. I spent like three hours today just going down the rabbit hole trying to find any evidence, and it is so cryptic. And folks, I'm going to find out. So we got a future video. Just hang on. But as far as previous videos of mine saying like it's Hawaii, I don't think it is. I think that's a false location or maybe it's a P.O. box just to be like, yes, we are an American company, says some overseas company that actually makes the content in some basement with KJ Schrock as a prisoner uh, so they can dodge any kind of like copyright law problems. I don't know. I do not know. Is it a money laundering situation? I don't know. I don't know. Who can say? But I will find out. I have my theory and I will find out. But for the moment, as far as Dia the Dead goes and who's involved, just consider them AIs and poor souls who were captured by Wow Now and, and were forced to make this movie because it is a bad film. Shame on you, AI BC14. You hope you get, you get blasted by a solar uh, wave or a solar blast or whatever it's called. Uh, a solar wave? Is it the kind that gets rid of the electricity? God, wouldn't that be a blessing? Just get rid of my smartphone. But then you can watch my video. All right, so what's the movie about? <laughs> I was going to type out a script, actually, like to explain this section, but it wouldn't help. I'm going to recall it by memory. Okay, oh, here we go. Just strap in. Here we go. All right, so right out the gate. Again, like I said, this film is a ripoff of Coco from Pixar. Uh, for those who don't know, Coco is about a, a little kid named Miguel in Mexico. He's like nine years old or something like that. He wants to be a musician. His family forbids it. During the Day of the Dead, he's able to cross over into the Land of the Dead, where he is able to talk to what he perceived as one of his relatives. I'll avoid spoilers, but long story short, he connects with his dead relatives and, and writes a wrong and brings his family out of that stigma of hating music into loving music. And it's all about family and, and, and heritage and, and putting love ones above personal like ventures. That's the movie. This movie is about a little kid named Chicha or something like that. And forgive me, I actually can't retain any of the names. I don't know any of the names. Like you can ask, you hold a gun to my head right now and say, what are the names of any of the characters from Dia of the Dead? And I go, I don't know, Luchador Dad and Luchador Son and Luchador Mom. And then I think there's a mummy with a really weird voice named Fredo. <laughs> That's it. That's all I know. That's all I know for names, that is. But don't worry. Names don't matter. This movie doesn't matter. None of us matter. Okay, so Dear the Dead starts off with a flashback two years ago, Comic Sans. This mom is like, with her Shrek ears, a luchador mom. She's like, I'm gonna leave. I gotta go do my thing. Good luck to my son, my six-year-old son. Fast forward two years, he's eight, it's his birthday. Uh, the father, luchador is like, oh, son, um, your mother loved you, but she left two years ago to go be a singer in the land of the dead. She's been there for two years, apparently, and now we got to go find her and bring her home. Why? You just said she's a free spirit, dad. You said she's a great mother and a great wife. Not really. She just left you for a contest that we don't even know the significance of. And for some reason, it required two years for her to go into the land of the dead and not die because she's still alive. And the dad and the son are like, well, let's go to sleep because that's how we're going to get to the land of the dead. They don't really explain it. And then, oh, ta -da, it's the day of the dead. And they get to go to the land of the dead and try to find the mom. But there's like some weird rules where you have to do like two good deeds in order to go to the actual song contest and support the mom. Because if not, the fact that their family members there means that they will get superpowers, the, the mother, and win the contest. And that breaks the rule. I, ah! I don't know. There's a cowboy skeleton side character. There's one wearing a poncho. As a matter of fact, um, everybody's wearing that for the most part. There's like three unique skeleton designs that I'm sure were downloaded from some program from some website by some other animator who sold the models and now have their creation uh, ravaged. And you have the cowboy one with a spade on his face. You got this poncho wearing skeleton and you got the the one that's of the Spanish artist, uh, Frida Kahlo, I believe is her name. Um, and you have a bunch of variations of them and they're very lazy uh, variations at that. Um, so you got side characters that feature these characters, these, these animation models. It's confusing, just change of colors. That's all we really have to go off of and they're pointless and useless and, and serve no point whatsoever. And I hate them. The mom 
has a little mummy friend named Fredo who like keeps calling her kid and he's like, ah, uh, kid, uh. <laughs> that's what he sounds like. I'm, I'm a mummy that have been dead for 2000 years and you gotta go to this contest and, and do your thing. And she's like, but I miss my family. But I got to do the contest because I'm a competitor. I'm a contender. Um, I'm also the world's greatest luchador in the universe, as a matter of fact. Uh, and they get the villain who's like, again, Frida, Kahlo, variant, skeleton with the clothespins. And she got her bat sidekick. And she's like, I got to win the contest for 10,000 years in a row. I guess the contest is every two years. I don't know the t increments of time for the contest. But she's been the reigning champion for 10,000 years. It's pretty impressive. She's been doing it for so long. I, I guess she's an ancient Egyptian or something. I don't know. Um, despite her Mexican um, accessories on her body. <laughs> what? There's no continuity? What's going on here? Um, so, yeah, she's trying to sabotage Shrek mom uh, and Fredo. She tries to do it by taking them to the Grim Reaper out on the edge of town. And the town's just some, like, Wild West town with a grocery store and a sheriff where it says, no gun, no fun, or something like that. Um, and by the way, uh, shout out to the lighting in this movie and how, like, the flames and the, and the candles and the lights from the windows of the town are just, like, not blurred whatsoever. So it uh, looks really awkward when you see it. Um, but yeah, the, the film's mostly just the dad and the son walking around looking for the mom trying to do their 10,000 good deeds for Eddie McDowell or whatever that whole Nickelodeon show was. Um, and then there's these uh, bounty hunters who are off of their job. And then the mom and Fredo and, and then this villain lady. And then that's it. That's the movie. I'm not even joking. There's almost, despite the amount of exposition of what we're told and not shown, and, and, and there's the reruns of footage back to back to back. There's nothing going on in this movie. Nothing. What's the main thing? Mom went to the realm of the dead for two years for some reason to be in a contest that she doesn't even really feel that sure about. But it's too late now. It's time for the contest. And okay, it culminates with them actually having the goddamn contest, the music competition. And 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 Frida here sings her whoop, 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 and Carmen with no lyrics. And then the actual mom, she got to sing, and her kid's like, Mom, it's me! And she's like, oh, cool, my son's here. Let me go and just crush this uh, competition. And also my husband's dancing in Gundam style. Cool. Um, and then Frida's off on the side being like, hey, she can't have a dancing uh, that, that she gets kicked out of the contest. It's against the rules. And then it was a time skip to the end, two years later, and the mother is not in the living room where the father and the son are. And I'm like, did the mother stay? Uh, but oh my gosh, the rioters had me on the edge of my seat. The mother then walks in the frame and she's like, yeah, that singing contest was kind of pointless. I'm glad I'm a mother now. Whoa, what was the point then? For Hector and Miguel and Coco, it's about Hector realizing that family is more important and having a wrong that was finally corrected. Miguel realizing that family is important, but also this give and take of, it's okay to also love music and to be yourself and pursue your goals. But there needs to be a balance. Um, and, and this movie, it's like mom went off to the underworld, a land of the dead, about a contest that she wants to win, but now she's unsure of and she wins it. And she said, hey, it was not a big deal. Two years of the life for the husband and the son wasted for this woman who didn't even care. Ah! So yeah, overall, this movie broke me. Everything about it was awful. And I'm just blown away that WoW now somehow has discovered new ways of being terrible. Uh, first off, the voice actors, I'm just gonna leave them alone. I, it's bad voice acting, but it's voice actors who I'm sure are good at their job, but have a gun held to their head. And they're just like, <laughs> let me just record the line. Uh, Ch Chica, run in a straight line. Like that's an actual line in the movie where the father tells the son, run in a straight line. Why? Why a straight line? Oh, that's because it's how it's animated. It has to run a straight line. Um, the editing of this film, just terrible. Reused footage almost back to back to back uh, to the point where it's just, it's it makes you want to throw up. Uh, the music is looped. There was a moment in a bar where they're repeating the same song almost five seconds back to back over and over. The quick cuts, don't know why you cut it that way. I don't know why I need to see the son for a millisecond before seeing the father for a second and then back to the son for a millisecond. I don't know. I guess it was necessary. Oh, that's right. Because we're reusing 15 minutes of original stuff. Gotta make it an hour long though. An hour and 20 minutes, please. That's how long a movie is for those who don't know. And the, and the animation. I mean, the skeleton models, I don't think they're awful uh, because they weren't made by WoW now. They were downloaded. 
I think the wrestler models were made by WoW now because they just have that hallmark of terrible quality with the teeth and the eyes. So that's probably original WoW now, but everything else was downloaded. The backgrounds, everything, the characters, just move them around. And, and wow, I feel so wow now. I feel so bad for the animators who are like, oh, maybe someone cool will download my my models for any kind of kit bashing purposes or whatever. And it's like, uh oh, it's wow now. Take it off the store, remove it now. Look at the facial expressions though. Happy, sad, uh, concerned, happy, happy. Uh, we get the imperfect loop of the mother who's about to fight the Grim Reaper. You can see it's a loop animation because it just stops and starts over. So it's like, oh, it doesn't have a proper clean cycle. It's just a hard cut. Cool. Wow. Amazing. And of course, the lighting's terrible. Where there's moments where like the characters are all black because they're like out in a dark environment, but there's no proper lighting to actually see them. I mean, you can imply that it's darker out there, but they're completely black. Okay, why? Oh, well, look at the windows in the background though. Look at the lighting. It's like in the forefront though, because there's no blur over the lightings in the background for the town which is repeated like four or five times. And of course, uh, as is tradition, lots of clipping. Clipping through the table, clipping through characters, uh, just terrible clipping. But overall, it's the story that gets me the most. Uh, surprisingly, right? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's so much, so much of nothing. I am blown away by how they were able to make this into a full movie. Uh, it's just idle prattle, nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, they don't explain anything. What does it mean to be dead for the son and the dead? Why are they there in the land of the dead exactly? How they get there, sleeping? Uh, was the mother alive the entire time? Why are these dumb rules about doing two good deeds? Why does the mother get a boost if the family's there unless they obey the rules? What are the rules exactly? Who's enforcing them? What's the significance of the contest? Why did the mom go there? Uh, apparently just to show off. She's like, oh, she's a go-getter. She's the crazy free spirit, that wife of mine, that mother of yours. Though when you hear her talk, she's like, yeah, I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent, I was bored. I left because I just wanted to do it because I'm just crazy, lol, I'm off the wall that way. And, and then of course, it'll culminate with a music contest that's just pointless, just, just laughably anticlimactic. Um, and also it really gets to me that like you have the father and the son walk around the town and it's like, just look to your left and I think you'll see the mom like 10 feet away from you. How do you keep missing her? Uh, this poor father. <laughs> I, I, I really still hold the theory that this husband is just getting cucked. He doesn't even know it. He's like, oh, my wife. She uh, went out to the land of the dead to get boned. Da -da oh, man. I mean, the end of the movie in, even ends with a fapping sound effect. So you tell me. Worst wife and mother of all time and just ends with fapping. So overall, this movie is um, unsurprisingly terrible. It's just exposition the movie. It tells you everything, shows you nothing, and what you do see is reused and terrible. Uh, I feel so bad for the folks who are actually stuck watching this. Uh, looking through the reviews on Amazon or IMDb, you got these parents who are like, yeah, my kids, um, they actually stabbed me from out of how <laughs> much they hated this movie. Uh, and the poor kids are like, bum, you put on Dia the Dead, not Coco? Uh, I want to leave. I need to call Child Protective Services. Get me out of here. Because I can't think of anyone who would gleefully watch this stuff. Nobody, nobody would. You're tricked into watching WoW now. You're not doing it out of your own volition. Nobody watches it for, for fun or willingly, unless you're me, apparently. God save me. So yes, WoW Now Entertainment is shameless. Uh, whatever they're called nowadays, family entertainment TV, just as bad. And guys, I'm coming for you. Expect future videos. I'm gonna go into the goddamn lion's den here and discover the truth and, and expose you all. I'll shoot real exposition for the frauds you really are. So let's go. Gotta get KJ Shrock out of that prison before he goes to the land of the dead.